Good day, Forty Orty listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Forty Orty podcast. I'm Thomas Henley, and today we're going to be diving deep into autism and dating online. A very interesting topic. Personally, I found great difficulty with navigating um, the dating world as an autistic person. I have done a lot of work on myself personally, and over time, I've, I've built up my my social and dating skills enough. But one thing that I really struggle with, well, still to this day in in single life, is online dating. I can never seem to 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 catch the drift and and I guess understand exactly how to how to navigate that area. Today I'm joined by the very lovely Jamil, and we're going to be talking about his app, the Hiki app, a dating online dating service for autistic people. Jamil, how are you doing today? I'm doing I'm doing really good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm excited to be here. Of course, um, it's been it's been a bit of a strange day for me today because I usually I work like a four day week, and I usually take take the Fridays off. But I've got something on work on Friday, so today <laughs> Wednesday's the day today, and it's been been very strange, like waking up at normal work time and just being like, oh, there's no work today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a. It's been a funky time, I think, of a funky couple of years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, with, with all the um, the changes to people working at home. And I mean, I actually, I started my job online. So I, I started my job from home. So I've only met about three of my colleagues from my, uh, wow. From my workplace. Wow. Yeah, yeah the, the, the Hiki team has, has always been remote from day one. Cool. So the transition hasn't been hasn't been uniquely challenging for us, but there's there's a whole host of, you know, there's a lot going on in the world. And so definitely it's just uh we're just trying to figure things out as we go. I su- I suppose as well, do you you know, because it is a sort of a dating app, do you ha- did you have to like put like notices, like COVID notices on on the app or you, you, you have the ability from, it's, it's your choice if you want to disclose that you are vaccinated or not. So all of that sure. is sort of, in, is a part of your profile. Uh, should you please? I think that the biggest impact that COVID had for Hiki is, you know, people, people needed to feel a sense of connectedness and a sense mm-hmm. of community more than ever. Sure. And so in a lot of ways, you know, for lack of a better word, COVID was, was a tailwind. Um, our growth numbers really skyrocketed. People came, came to the app looking for friendship, love and, and community. That's what we're all about. <laughs> it's, um, True dad. it's, it's really, uh, you know, one of the, co- the common things that I get, cause I, I make a lot of, um, dating and relationship posts and videos and stuff like that. And um, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of autistic people who have had like really, really bad secondary school experiences and like they've never truly sort of got over that. And hmm. I, I like like to say it as like you're biased towards negative experiences with other humans. And um, hmm. there's a lot of people out there who are saying, you know, I, I don't need a relationship. I don't need friends. And, you know, I, f- I think that although we are all, you know, we may be autistic people, it's um really, really important to, to have those sort of communal community aspects to our lives. It doesn't remove our desire to connect and love and make friends. So, so I guess, I guess we can sort of move into <laughs> The actual uh, podcast questions. Um, cool. Let's do it. I guess a really great place to start would be, you know, when did when did you start Hiki and why? Yeah, a short so Hiki, one. <laughs> Hiki, uh, 
Kiki became available in the App Store in July of 2019. Cool. And it took us about a year to build the app, which means we probably started working on it in the summer of 2018. The, the why, which I suppose is, is the big one, um, my cousin happens to be autistic. He confided in me one day that he was finding it very difficult to make friends. Sure. And, you know, ultimately, I think he, he had fear over finding a, a partner to have a family of his own. And I, at the time, I, I had the same fear. Um, I was single. I wasn't in, in, in partnership. And mm. we were building closeness by having similar fears and worries about our future. And when I walked away from the conversation, went to go look for some resources for him. He said he was going to look for some resources for me. He was able to find a bajillion things yeah. <laughs> and, and I wasn't able to find much of anything. And so that there was no light bulb moment. People think, Oh, Oh, like he, it, it, it didn't really happen like that. It, it was mostly a trigger for just a bit of a, an internal sort of educational journey. Uh, sure. My background is, is in, is in sociology. My academic background is in, is in sociology and research. And so I spent the next few months learning in the ways of which the, the sort of health and wellness effects of loneliness were, were intersecting specifically with mm. the neurodiversity of, sure. of autism. And I don't know that I, I, I learned or discovered, but I, I I came to the, yeah, I, I learned is the right word. I learned that, you know, autistic adults were committing self-harm at really alarming rates, specifically due to lack of social opportunities. Yeah. And that's when I, that's when we started to collaborate and thought, okay, well, I think this is not, not only is this a public health crisis that no one's really talking about, but it's mm -hmm. one that we can, one that we can probably solve. And so, uh, decided to build Hiki. Brilliant. I think, I think there's, um, there's, there's many, many ways that, <laughs> that autistic people struggle, but I, I definitely like fr from making my videos and posts and stuff, it's always the ones about relationships and dating that seem to, to fly off as it be. And, um, like, I mean, it's for a good reason because I've, I mean, when it, when I was, you know, back back then when I was single and I I didn't really feel feel comfortable dating and and having relationships, I I tried to go on different sites, like I think it was like an Asperger's dating or like so, something like that, and I, I was looking around and I was I was trying to find something where I could connect with other autistic people. To, to to find someone to have a relationship with and yeah. I, I really just couldn't find anything and you know i i kind of had to default to in in terms of online stuff i had to default to using things like tinder and and uh bumble and what's the other one hinge and yeah. um it's a very uh i mean we, we could talk we could talk forever about how difficult it can be to date as a dude, like on, in on with with online dating and stuff. You know the algorithms usually against you. Um, but e even then, it was it was it's very hard to find someone who who was autistic. I could like no nobody put it in their profile, which is yeah. which is why I was like, I need to I need to get you on to to, to talk about an autism specific yeah. dating app because, like, wow, that's um. It's really awesome. It's something that I've been looking looking around for for a long time. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I think, you know, I think all, beyond autism specifically, I think marginalized, historically marginalized communities, communities that have been sort of othered sure. by dominant culture, whether that be race, gender, mm -hmm. neurodiversity, all, all these things, sexual preferences, yeah. those communities feel 
feel underserved by the dominant platforms. Mm-hmm. And so Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, we don't always feel welcome. We don't always feel like we can find community there. And so the success rates are, are terrible on those platforms for, for marginalized communities. And I think that, that is a, is one piece. There's, there's a whole, there's a whole lot of things that went into why we decided to build this, but that was, that was one, one piece of it. Mm-hmm. And beyond the, the specificity of the community that, that we serve, I think our app goes further by, you know, including things like a, a human centered approach to, to designing the platform. Right. I mean, sure. I'm, I'm neurotypical. And so it was tremendously important that I wasn't the one designing and, and building mm, the app. Mm. Um, the app's not, not for me. It should be built by, by other autistic adults. And so we have a remarkable team of autistic engineers, autistic designers. 80% of the employees who work at Hiki are, are neurodivergent. That is so good. That's yeah. like the amount of organizations out there that are specifically for autistic people and just like wow. they don't even they don't even employ like 10, 20, 30 percent of their <laughs> employees. It's, wow. it, it, it's it's I mean it's in some it's it's both heartbreaking and also it's just it's just bad business. Like it doesn't it doesn't mm. make sense to me. You know, like my my job and and my role as the founder of Hiki, like there have, there's a long history of autistic adults self advocating for themselves. I, I, I don't need to be some, some like savior or anything like that. Sure. The, the community doesn't, the community doesn't need that from me and they didn't, they didn't ask it of me. What I can do is, is sort of leverage my privilege as a cisgender neurotypical male to uplift all these other amazing voices have, who have been doing the work long, long before I existed. And so that is like, that's the role that I play at Hiki. I'm, I'm an advocate and, and an ally, but I'm not, the, I shouldn't be the one. I sh- I'm not the face of Hiki. Like I'm, sure. I'm not the one, I'm not the one building it. That's, that's not my job. So we have an incredible team who's, who's, who makes Hiki what it is. And I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that very very soon <laughs> um, i'm getting excited i'm sorry yeah <laughs> you jump with the gun yeah one one thing that 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 perhaps unrelated uh thing that that rung for me was you said that you you were struggling with dating as well yeah. like did like what happened did you have like a a glow up and then <laughs> no no there's still no glow up I guess I should just put this out there. I'm still single. So I, I, I okay. guess I'm still struggling. I guess I'm still struggling with <laughs> dating. So I think that the, the irony is like everyone, everyone struggles with dating just to, for some, for some of us who are more privileged, we have, we have more resources at our disposal. Sure. And so I had more, you know, I don't, I had more options. And so there's, there are more ways for, me to navigate that Mm. world than there were for my cousin specifically and so i think that that's the disconnect sure well um for ladies want to uh, send in or lady or men (laughs) i I, I don't know if 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 the people out there want to send in some some emails and uh (laughs) send them in send them in yeah Yeah. (laughs) It'll be a new segment. Righty. So um I guess a, a good a good place to start would be, you know, what differentiates Hiki from other dating slash friendship friendship apps? And yeah. what kind of adjustments have been beneficial to autistic people? Yeah. So I think actually the, the first one is it's, it's sort of nuanced, but I want to, it's important is most of the other apps, if not all the apps are actually just dating apps. Mm-hmm. And so that is an important distinction for us is Hiki, Hiki's not just a dating app. It's a, a friendship dating and community app. And so there's 
there's sort of this, there's the pressure of finding a partner who we're going to be romantic and then we're going to do what X, Y, Z is alleviated because the, the goal of the platform is actually to find connectedness and community. And, and that could, that could, that could be in many different forms, right? That could, that could mean a lot of different things for, for a lot of different people, depending on what you're looking for. And so I think that there's, there's a diversity of access that happens on Kiki because people are looking for a lot of different types of things and they're able to find that. I think beyond that is the fact that it's just for autistic adults. And so whether we did all these other cool things, which, which I'll talk about on the design side, which, which I'm really proud of, even if we didn't do any of those things, I still think we probably have almost as much success as we've had because the real value of Hiki is being able to be a part of a community of people who have a shared experience as you do. And so being able to feel seen and feel validated is from my understanding of what people have shared with me, it can be a really liberating experience. But beyond that, I think is the actual, you know, the, the, the design or the user experience of the platform, which we built in this like wild community-based approach to product design where we design screens, which were designed by an autistic woman. We would send out those screens to a community of, of about two or 300 autistic adults wow. and they would share their feedback and then we'd make changes and then we'd send it back and they would share their feedback and then we'd make changes. And so mm -hmm. everything from the size of the buttons to the colors that sit next to each other to the, the unique notifications ha that happen on the app as a means of, of managing expectations. So there are no surprises. In it. All of those things are intentional and all of them were built, um, not just for, but, but by autistic adults as well, which I think is what, what makes Hiki really, really mm -hmm. special. I really like that you've sort of blurred the lines a little bit around like dating and friendships and sort of tied it all in together because there's a, there's a lot of people out there who like they, they don't want like they, they want multiple things like they want they want to be part of a community and friends and they want they want to have a partner and that there's also there's also a lot of people who find the idea of joining a dating app and everyone on there being focused on meeting people and dating and talking and like it's very high pressure like yeah. <laughs> you know it like is. and it and it can be very demoralizing as well sometimes um you know if you perhaps if if you were to go for for a tinder and swipe your max ooh, swipe the max like amount of people that you can swipe or whatever like and you only get like one match a week or something, <laughs> something along those lines like it really destroys people's self-esteem and um yeah like i guess i completely lost my train of thought no i, I i'm with you <laughs> i'm with you i think it can be really daunting and the stakes are can feel like they're really high mm -hmm. when you're on those types of platforms. And probably, it probably, honestly, if, if, if it's probably not the healthiest approach, even if to dating in the first place, you know, I think going in with a sort of um, a set of intentions is really healthy so that there's transparency in the communication and we understand what, the other person desires like that to me makes a tremendous amount of sense, but skipping friendship and just being romantic or just dating mm. that, 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 that was probably a gap in, in our socialization growing up, you know? And so I think having a platform that allows and encourages that fluidity and that optionality gives people control back over their, over their, over their experience. Sure. And so I think, so it's, can, I, I think it's, helpful. I can kind of like, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I can kind of, 
you know, if I'm think, thinking to myself, you know, that there, there is a, um, a lot of like differences in sexual preferences and, um, what would you say sexual orientation with people who people who are autistic like there's there's been a lot of studies on like asexuality and um things things of that nature and you know some people like for myself um I'm demisexual so it means you know it means that I need a, a strong emotional connection in order to feel you know, romantic or, or and or sexual attraction to people, mm-hmm. and you know that the whole thing with with Tinder is that, you know, the the thing that you have to do is, <laughs> is is you go on and you swipe and you match with someone and you have to try and get them to meet up with you, <laughs> like, <laughs> and um, I you know I don't even, I don't even know if I want to meet up with them. I want to, you know, I could give them a video call or chat to them about certain things and. You know that would be so much nicer than you know feeling feeling rushed because it's almost you know as an experience as just a man in in general on dating apps it's like if you don't sort of nail down a date <laughs> within like the first week or or so or you know a lot of people tend to you you kind of drift down the DMs you know and you you, you don't hear from them again and yeah. um it just it just feels so so pressured just to get everything perfect the social communication the the date idea and then you've got to go out and you've basically got to do an interview for yourself um with another person but you know if i'd met someone online and i've been chatting and chatting to them for a while and then you know we we connect on a lot of things and we video called i'm going to feel a lot more confident going into a dating situation with that person. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, and you're on top of that, you're, you're, you're expected to make all of these decisions based on a photograph. <laughs> and I mean, I, there's, there's an unlimited amount of reasons why that's flawed. I mean, for, for some of us, we don't, we don't care what the other person looks like. So sure. for some of us, we do care, but that's one of, 1 million things that go into a decision making process. And so mm-hmm. having only a photo, which is, I think, Tinder's model, which works for them, it, it wasn't what we wanted to build. And so on Hiki, you have the ability to talk about your stims, you have the ability to list your special interests, you have the ability to write a free phone bio if you want. You have the ability to respond to prompts if you want. You, you have photos, but it's it's one of 20 pieces of information that creates sure. your profile, which I think just, it, it's empowering because it, it's, it's a fuller picture of who you are as an, as an individual. Mm-hmm. And it, it allows other people to make more thoughtful decisions of whether they want to talk to you or not. Mm-hmm. So physical, physical attractiveness is only there's only really one dimension like you can find someone very physically attractive and then you meet them in person and you you just you're like oh my god how did i get myself into this this situation we have nothing in common we you know i i just don't get the the wavelength that they're on you know like yeah. you know and it's it if things like match match.com and like thing you know sort of those online early online dating platforms were more popular then it would be a bit easier but it it seems like the majority of people on on those sites tend to be a bit older a bit more more of the older generation and like i've when it when i was single and i went on to these places it's very hard to find someone who's my age <laughs> like yeah everyone's everyone's on the apps you know everyone's on the apps everyone's on the apps but i, I think things are are shifting a little bit mm-hmm. and we see it with the success of bumble we see it with the success of hinge hinge made a decision i think five or six years ago to 
make their onboarding flow. So like the process of creating a profile four times as long as it was. Sure. And the traditional thinking in technology platforms is the easier, like the quicker the onboarding flow, the better for the user because there's less friction in getting onto sure. the platform. Sure. And so they did the opposite of what anything you would read in a book would tell you about of how to grow, grow mm -hmm. a platform. And people were really investors were angry and they thought it was a bad decision <laughs> and it ended up being the catalyst for all their growth. And it's the reason why hinge is what it is today. And what people didn't realize is, okay, if we make the onboarding flow four times as long, we're going to lose a lot of people who don't want to do that. But yeah. a lot of those people were interested in more of the Tinder experience, which is they want to get on, they want to find a partner, they want to go on a date, which to be clear, there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with you should do. Whatever, I think you're, you're missing you an want. element. You're missing yeah. an element from there. <laughs> you know, but if that's what you want, cool, cool. Um, but on Hinge, the people who stayed were really invested in yeah. the experience yeah. and really invested in building this profile. And so they, their engagement numbers were much better than Tinder's and their retention mm -hmm. numbers were much better than Tinder's because the people that stayed really wanted to be there. Sure. And so it, it's just, I, I always find those things really interesting because what we, what we think is the right decision from a, a business perspective is, is not always, is not always correct. And so I think that mm -hmm. that spoke to me when we were, when we were building Kiki, we wanted to build it in that ethos of like, okay, yeah, it might take some time to build a profile, but there's going to be more information. There's going to be more mm -hmm. there. The people who stay are going to be really invested in the experience. It's awesome. So as a neurotypical person in a neurodivergent space bubble, what do you think your role is in the co-producing of Hickey Up? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And candidly, it's, it's one that I'm, I'm constantly re revisiting. Sure. I think my, the way that I approach it is that, and I, I sort of shared this earlier, so I, I apologize if, if I'm, if I'm repeating myself, but my, my job is not to, to build the app. My job is not to, to design the experience because it's, it's not for me. And so my job is to empower my team to do a remarkable job at that, right? And so hire the absolute most talented autistic designers that are out there. Hire the smartest autistic engineers out there. Hire the most creative autistic content folks out there. And leverage my privilege as a cisgendered heterosexual neurotypical male to drive this company forward from sort of a, a technology and business perspective. And so sure. I think of myself as, as, as I would sort of any, any advocate or ally in my opinion is supposed to leverage their, their privilege to empower the voices who have been doing this long, long before before they did. And so sure. that is the role that I've taken at, mm -hmm. at Hiki. And that's, that's sort of my, my approach to, to the work. What kind of, what kind of numbers do you have in your team? Like, do you have like, um, in the, in the tens or the hundreds or? I'm definitely not in, in the hundreds. We're, we're in the, <laughs> we're in the, the, the tens. Okay. Still a, a really small, scrappy team doing our, our best to, to figure things out and, and try to build a really special platform to help to help folks find find community. It's it sounds it sounds really good because you're not only sort of tailoring the actual inner workings of the app and and the user experience to autistic people, but you also have autistic designers and graphics people and content people like um it's kind of kind of going a, above and beyond for um co-production 
it's it's the way things should should be done, you know, and you should, in my opinion, at least, you should never build something for a community without the community. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean you, you can't be a part of it, of course, you know, like I, I can only speak to personal experiences, but as a, as a black man, I need white allies, you know, I need everyone to be in the fight sure. and struggle with me. You know, mm-hmm. I can't do it on my own. Um, it's building those bridges. Might, yeah. Yeah. And like the role they play might be differently, but everyone needs to be invested in this. Otherwise we're not going to get shit done. And mm-hmm. so that's how I approach approach my, my role. You know, it's, so. I'm, I'm committed to this journey, but that doesn't mean I need to be the, the loudest voice in the room. Um, in fact, it, it, it probably means I should be the most quiet and I should spend most of the time listening and very little of the time speaking. And so that's, that's how I've approached the work that mm-hmm. we do. Cool. Well, I, I often, whenever I do presentations or like uh, public speaking events and stuff, I always bring people to the, the analogy of the caveman. Like um, if you imagine like a community of neurotypical cave people together, um, they, all, they all go out and they hunt and at, at the end of each night they sit by the fire and um, they, they chit chat and they, they socialize and they, they network and you know the the autistic people in the, in that situation would be the the cave people at the side tinkering with all the the tools and ideas and thinking stuff up and you know i i think that in general we, we do tend to struggle a bit more in the organizational sort of um so- social aspects of businesses or the world or organizations and you know, I I, li- I like to think of neurotypical people being, you know, because because we are a social animal. Like we we've only got to this point in our society not because of uh, one individual with a great idea. It's all the people who help to to pull that idea and and organize it and create structures around it. And you know, I f- I think that that neurotypicals are the are the glue. That, that holds everything together, you know. Not to say that autistic people can't. Um, I know many autistic people who are very highly organized, but I am not one of these. And um, I'm, I, when you were speaking about your sort of role within as as Hiki, you know, it kind of sparked up that that memory. Yeah, I, I think any team any business who doesn't have diversity of thought, age, gender, race, neurology is, is going to struggle in, in the future. You know, if, if you don't have all those different types of folks on your team, you're not going to be able to make the most thoughtful decisions because you're only going to be able to see things through a specific lens. Sure. And so we given our, our product, absolutely. This is what the team should look like. But even if our product was like, I don't know, selling tissue paper, we probably, we should still look the way that we look, you know, sure. no matter what it is, that, that is the future. And those are going to be the businesses, in my opinion, that succeed. So um, getting into a bit more of the specifics, I mean, can you, can you take us through like a, so imagine if I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm an autistic person. I'm, I struggle. I, I'm sort of, I can hold a conversation, but I, I struggle a bit socially and um, I've always wanted to have a girlfriend and I've always wanted to have friends that I can just chat to whenever I want and, um, communities that I can get involved in, and I I find Hiki on the App Store, and I I download it. What is the 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 experience like? What 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 do I have to do, and what will I see? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's 
the intention is in for, to, for it to be as sort of intuitive as possible. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll be doing is you'll, you'll have an opportunity to, to answer questions about yourself. Mm -hmm. And those questions can be a, a variety of whatever really speaks to you. Sure. It could be as sort of direct and straightforward as what are some of your favorite stints? It can be as creative and out of the box as if you were a character from a TV show, who would you be and why? And all these types of questions can be answered. You pick which one speak to you. you. You say yes to some, you say no to some. And it builds this really beautiful profile that has all these things about you, you know, name, age, gender, sexual orientation, and then all this stuff. And that is what creates your Hickey profile. And then you drop into the app. And once you jump, jump into the app, you sort of have two different types of experiences. One experience, you are looking at people individually and making a decision if you're interested in being friends with them or if you're interested in something romantic. If that person also is interested, you match and then you can start a conversation. And then the other piece is a more community-based approach where anyone on Hiki, regardless of matching, can sort of post content and anyone else can engage with that underlying content through comments, likes, loves, et cetera. And so that, that is like the Hiki experience. It's very interesting. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I, I just downloaded it when you were, when you were telling me, cause I realized that I haven't had a, a flick for it yet, but I, um, yeah. I very much like the, the check boxes <laughs> makes it, makes it a lot easier. <laughs> so there's, there's some questions it's like, uh, what kind of match would you prefer men, women, non-binary? Got some photos. Okay, I need, to, I need to upload one photo apparently. Okay. Yeah, I, I really like the, the way that it's sort of clearly segmented. Like the sign up process is very clearly segmented. Like it's not like you have um, you have your bio and then you, you click on each aspect of it and you add stuff to it. Because like, I mean, some sometimes for, for the majority of... Of, of dating apps that I've seen people tend to be very um, they, they don't really put anything in the bios or any anything like that it's just like their photo and maybe like their social media tagline yeah. or submit if they're wanting yeah. to get some views I guess um, would you would you say that you know, a lot, a lot of what draws the communities and and people together are, are answers to these to these questions. Does it like do you have like a an algorithm that sort of links links people together, or is it just you go on there and you see like different profiles and you, you choose who to message? Yeah. So right now, the 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 decision making is in, is entirely on on the person. And so the information in the profile is what empowers people to decide if they're interested in meeting someone. Sure. Now, the future of Hiki, which is all these features are sort of being built, is will be the ability to search and find people based on specific profile things. So mm -hmm. as opposed to searching people based on geography, you'll be able to search for people based on special interests. And you'll, you'll be able to say, okay, I want to match with people who also are interested in X, Y, Z. That's and really then we'll, cool. we'll, we'll be able to show you that. And so that that's like all this, like we're building all these really incredible, exciting features that that are, are coming soon. And we're really excited for what, what they're going to look like. That's really cool. Fr from looking at the match window, the match icon that you have, it kind of looks like a mix of um, Hinge and Tinder. Like... But it's a bit more like stream streamlined. Don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm trying to talk while I'm having a look through. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. No, check it out. Check it out. So you have like a, a feed 
on here. This I, I imagine this is like the community aspect to it. Yeah. Does does it just just post as like a global feed or is it like locational or it's a global so. feed. But again, like the, the, the features that are being built are you're gonna be have full control over what what you see on your feed. So coming soon in like the next few weeks, you'll be able to decide, okay, I only want to see this type of content, or mm -hmm. I only want to see content from these types of people, or I only want to see content from ge this geography, or I'm interested in talking about sports and I can go to the sports feed. So the future will be um, a much more customizable and personal approach to the feed. When we sure. were building Hiki, you know, you're starting out with zero users. Like day one, there are zero people on the app. And so apps get built in these stages. And we've just reached the point where there are probably far too many people on Hiki for, for there to be a singular global feed. Yeah. Now, now you'll be able to control your experience and say, okay, I only want to see the feed from my friends or all that is, is sort of being built um, because, we're, because we're growing. It's really interesting. There's lots, so many possibilities. <laughs> I suppose one f one thing that I wanted to ask you a bit more in detail about is, um, you know, you, you were talking about your was it your brother or your friends who was who, who was sort of exchanging information on dating with? It was me, uh, my cousin and I. Your cousin, your cousin, of yeah. course, yeah. I mean, is your cousin involved in the project? No, he he didn't want to be. He's involved because he's a, a user of Hiki, but um, and like a working at working at the company was not something he had any any sure. interest in. Has he has he found it to uh, be helpful? Has he has he made some friends and yeah? Is it is he wanting yeah. to go out on dates? And he has. Um, he's had a, a girlfriend for the past year, and I'm, I'm putting all of his business out here in the streets. Um, he's had, he's had a girlfriend I'm too nosy. Past, yeah, I'm too nosy. for the past year and a half. Um, and I think he's made Brilliant. a whole, a whole community of, of really amazing friends. So he's, he's, Brilliant. he's feeling good. And, um, where, where did, where did he come from? Like what, what kind of, you know, you know, you, you're saying that he was struggling with, with dating. Like had he, had he tried other things before as, you know. Yeah, he he tried the the traditional apps out there. Like, I think he tried Tinder, and I don't know if I don't think Hinge was as big back then. But he definitely tried Tinder, mm -hmm. and didn't didn't find any success. Um, found it very difficult to to connect with people, and found it very. Sure. Um, based on what he shared with me, challenging to understand when to disclose, if to disclose, how to disclose. Yeah. Yeah. Never suppose... really knew if he should be doing it or, you know, it was, I think it was just, it, it adds a layer of, of, of things to, to navigate, mm. which isn't to say it's, it's unnavigatable. You know, I think there's certainly success. I think there's success to be found anywhere, depending on what you're looking for and who you are. Um, sure. But for him specifically, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. So I guess you know one one thing that sort of separates autistic people from neurotypical in dating is understanding the unwritten social codes. And I've I've found talking to my friends who who use dating apps that they're, they're neurotypical that they just kind of they they understand the process a bit more like. It's it's more of a natural thing for them, you know. For for me, you know, I, I used to be extremely socially awkward and extremely like shy, and I really struggled with the the communication and social and uh, and emotional aspects. And it, it took me a long time to sort of build up my my skills and understanding of myself and other people, and. It was only until I'd done all that work that I started to kind of understand the framework of, you know, how, how dating works and, you know, what boundaries I need to put down and, 
you know, things of that nature. And I always felt like I always felt a little bit, uh, you know, in, in open water, you know, I trying to adapt as much as I can, but, you know, f- still, you know, falling under the surface and it's, I find it, it's, it's very, very difficult because the, the, the psychology as well with dating apps and, and meeting people online is, is very different to meeting people in real life through hobbies and things like there's there's a clear sort of you connect with people talk about things and oh they're mm, they're quite attractive i'd quite like to go on a date with them and then you you go on a date with them like not saying that that's easy <laughs> but you know there's it's it's very different to just swipe 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 oh there's a match right i'm gonna text them how can i fully understand how this situation works and you know get a get a date <laughs> go on it and then what happens after i don't i don't know with the only time that we've interacted with each other is in the, in you know once in person and then messages and you know I, it's all very complicated and um very hard to to understand the the process of and and work with it um as an autistic person yeah it, it's you know, I think the the core of why we exist and, and why why Hiki is out there is is so that you don't have to subscribe to those social norms and those unwritten yeah. rules of communication and you know to to put it simply, you, you don't have to mask when you're on Hiki. You, you can just that is, that is very important you can just be who <laughs> be whoever you are and that's you should come that's that's exactly who you should be mm-hmm. and i suppose con- considering that you know it's it's for autistic people you don't have to well it's yeah about masking and mask masking not not even in the sense of talking and interacting with someone it's more like you know, if I was to create the the perfect profile for myself, it would be including all my special interests and what I do, and like, and you know, from from experience, that kind of thing doesn't work. And it's just pick the photos that you look most most attractive in, and you know, try and talk in their language as much as you can, <laughs> and then maybe, and maybe when you meet up with them, you can sort of say I'm autistic and sort of let the mask slip a bit but you're just going straight to it like this is me this is the autistic me you're autistic <laughs> we've we, we know the the ins and outs of um things that that won't be like required or optional questions on on mainstream dating sites yeah. perhaps that's right that's that's it man that's that's exactly why why we're here, so that you don't have to exhaust yourself doing all those things. You can just you can just be you. Brilliant. You know, just to kind of round up the 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 main questions that I had. Where do you hope to take Hiki in the future? Do you have any grand plans that that you're aspiring to, or your team is aspiring to, that you can Our- disclose? Yeah, our 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 grandest plan is to create a safe space for neurodivergent adults to feel seen, to feel validated, to not be othered, and to have a space where they can find friendship, love, and community. And it's a big that that is that's the grand that really is the grand plan you know and then how can we do that for more people how can we you know there's x amount of people on hiki today how do we get how do we get more um how do we empower more people to lead more fulfilling lives um we had our first hiki wedding uh a few weeks ago oh, cool which how did was, that go well, someone, when I say hiki wedding, what I mean is, is someone wrote in to our customer support team and said, Hey, 
just wanted you to know two non-binary autistic adults met on Hiki 16 months ago and today we got married and we just wanted you guys to know that we're really grateful we? and we want more of that we want more people having those types of life experiences mm -hmm. because everyone deserves that you know everyone deserves to be happy and everyone deserves mm -hmm. to find joy so that's that's the grand plan awesome well uh that that concludes all of the the questions uh cool. i was hoping to ask amazing I guess what we'll do now is have a look on Instagram to see if anyone's replied in the short time that I've given people. Okay, so I've got I've got one here. <laughs> Can anybody join Hiki? Anyone who is autistic and over the age of 18. And okay. we respect and honor self-diagnosis as well. Cool. That that is that is a very good very good point actually like um i don't imagine that you've i mean <laughs> i imagine it'd be quite complex to uh and legally complex to to require people to to give in their diagnosis forms <laughs> yeah i mean well we would like for one like n no one should ever have to prove their diagnosis no matter who you are or what it is and the system is so broken anyway People of color, women go undiagnosed and misdiagnosed at, at alarming rates. And so, yeah, we, we respect and honor self-diagnosis. If you're if you're autistic and over the age of 18, you are welcome on Hiki. Is Hiki going to be expanded to different neurodiversities in the future? Uh, maybe. Maybe I think if there's if there's a way if 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 that's what our community wants, then I think it's something that we will excuse me think about doing. If it's not what our community wants, then then we won't. We've gotten feedback from from both sides. I think a, a lot of we've gotten feedback from a lot of autistics who who mm -hmm. say, "Well, we would love to have ADHDers on on the app." There's and there we've gotten feedback from autistics that said. You know, we really want this space to be just for us. And so that's going to be just like, that's when we think about our approach to product design, which is community-based sort of human-centric design, that, that that's, the, those are the types of decisions that will, that will empower our community to make. Sure. And so we'll see. So maybe in, maybe in time. <laughs> maybe in time. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting question, that one, because, um, like just fr from personal observation of other autistic people and and people com commenting on my on my posts about their um, NTND and NDND relationships, um, that there's a lot of autistic people who are friends, good friends with, or partners to people who are ADHD, like. Um, even in my own life, I just find myself just meshing, meshing really well with people like ADHD, ADD. I don't know if it's it's because of just being, just existing and being different to the rest of the society and growing up that way, or whether it's you know something to do with the traits, the the common sort of traits of each. You know, autistic being the straight sort of direct blunt kind of <laughs> bringing people down and the ADHD being the, the the more sociable, talkative ones that you can kind of just listen to and not have to to input as much on. <laughs> like it does it does seem seem to be a trend that way. Um but uh okay so that's the Instagram questions over. I guess what I want to ask is what do you want people to take away from this podcast? I'll chat. Hiki is committed to creating the absolute most amazing platform for autistic adults to find friendship, love, and community. And 
we, that doesn't mean we, we always get everything right. And we are open to any and all feedback on how to improve. We want to know what we're doing well so we can do more of it. We want to know what we're not doing well so we can do less of it. Sure. And we want to empower the community to be the ones who drive this product forward. I think often within the technology space, people are prescribing what they think we want. And they strip a lot of agency away from, from the community and from the users. And I want to, we want to do things differently. We want to give that agency back to the community. So we're going to build what people want. And we're really excited about that. And we're really committed to, to this mission. Brilliant. Great takeaway there. So now it's time for song of the day, uh, a new segment to um, 40 Audio Podcast. <laughs> what is your song and why? Oh, I'm, I'm looking over here on my, I always have Spotify pulled up on, <laughs> on one, on, on one screen. What is my song of the day? Let's something that's, that's either meaningful to you or is related to the topic. Hmm. Let's see. This is the, the pressure is the pressure's on here. I should have had this pre prepared. <laughs> it's okay. That's what, that's what editing's for. This, this segment's all about adding a new dimension to people talking to each other, you know, like cool. making like a little playlist on Spotify where everybody's songs of the day. And um, I I'm hoping that it sort of ties in some more of that emotional aspect to conversation. Yeah. I like that. Okay, cool. So my song of the day is going to be Satisfy My Soul by Bob Marley and the Whalers. Mm. Every time I hear it, it feels like a warm cup of tea. It feels like feet in this, the ocean. Yep. It just feels, it feels very healing. Um, it feels like a hug. <laughs> it feels like a hug from my mom. And so Satisfy My Soul, Bob Marley. Check it out. Are you a fan of um, reggae? I am. I grew up in a Jamaican household. And so oh. reggae music was was the, the background noise to my my childhood. That's cool. And it's it's uh it's still a, a deep love of mine. It's like a, a type of reggae that people do. It's like is it like trip trip reggae? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Send me some stuff after the podcast. Send me send me your favorite jam. I'd love to jam. Yeah. That. It's it's mostly just a collection of of different songs but i do love cool. bob marley like i remember the f the first time that i really heard a reggae song was watching i am legend the one with will smith in it yeah 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 <laughs> um, the end of the world with his dog and he's yeah. just kind of listening to is it free, free little birds something like that i think so yeah yeah, yeah. i think so beautiful wow. song amazing man well of course, if you want to find my podcast, you can find it from anywhere that you usually get your podcasting streams from. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the lot. And if you want to follow my work, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram. I post a lot of stuff around autism, dating, mental health, and I'm soon to get a bit more involved in upl my uploading schedule of YouTube. So you can definitely look forward to that. For anybody who's interested in getting me on to do a public speech or do a presentation or be a part of a panel or do some modeling work, you can find me at my website, thomashenley.co.uk. And yep. Yeah, Thank you very much to, to all my YouTube members, as per usual, and Patreon supporters, specifically Mr. Patrick Vedi, always got my back. So I, I guess well, one final question, Jamil, would be, um, have you enjoyed your time on the 40 OT podcast? I had a blast. I feel grateful to be here. I had a lot of fun hanging out, and thank you so much for having me. No worries. You've been a pleasure to have on, and 
you know, I, I will definitely be looking into the 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 Hickey app. Um particularly the friendship side because I'm currently in a relationship, but <laughs> I, d- I do definitely need to get some some friends in my area, so I will be cool. I will update you on on how that's going. <laughs> Keep me posted. Keep me posted, man. Well, thank you everybody for listening, and thank you, Jamil. It's been absolutely an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you. See you later. See you later. Bye.